You saw last time, my engine is done. So let's get into what actually happened. First of all, I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way since you're, I have your attention. If you wanna help us out and support us, I know you've seen that Rob has had some trouble with his engine as well last time, and that may lead to him getting something different. And then me, my engine is done. I'm definitely gonna need a new engine. And if you do want to help us, first thing you could do is watch all of our videos. We have over 150 videos on our channel. Like and share our videos with your friends. We have stickers, these are really cheap over on our website, refine-movement.com. Link in the, in the description and uh, check that out. Also buy Refine Movement shirts like I'm wearing now. There's two styles. The Teespring banner should be below the video or somewhere on the screen. Go check out our shirts. You can get them all different colors. You know, that stuff really will help us in the future, you know, because this stuff isn't cheap. And if you're into Hondas, you know that. Okay, so down to business. My engine just seized on track. <laughs> You saw that in the last episode of Robbie's videos. I mean, what can I say? This car has had seven track days on a motor that has, I think, 220,000 miles. So let that sink in. 220,000 miles on this D16 Y7. I haven't done any real prep to the internals. I've, I've taken care of this car over the last 10 years of its life. So I've done everything I could to make sure that the motor was healthy even when I was daily driving it. And then especially since I'm racing it. But you know, age is age. I will say that I've always been impressed with this motor and how it's held up over time uh, at the track because every time, you know, I expect it to fail. I do think for a motor where I started tracking it right as it hit 200K, I think that is hugely impressive just for Honda. And I know the Y series motors, as a lot of you mentioned, isn't ideal for racing because of the oil pump issue, oil flow issue, um, what is perceived as a, a baffling issue in the oil pan, which I want to address now. So I have my oil pan here. As you can see, it has an oil baffle. This is the stock Y7 original oil pan, unmodified. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an oil baffle. So let's look at the B series and the K series now and compare them to see what they look like and their aftermarket equivalent. As you can see here with the B series, it has a baffle kind of on the side, but where the pickup is in the middle, there actually isn't as much of a baffle as D series. You can see it's aftermarket equivalent where you can add a baffle or get a whole nother oil pan and have it, you know, be much better. Next is K-Series. K-Series stock has no baffling. You know, I think if I were running K-Series, there's no way in the world I would take it out on track without running a different oil pan. But D-Series, I think you can. And I will say that I do not think that my engine failed because of a baffling issue with the oil pan and it oil sloshing around. Sure, I do think the uh, baffling could be better. Aftermarket equivalent, the angle of the baffle is different, but it's not that much different in design from Honda's baffling. So everyone who's mentioned that, I appreciate your comments, but it's really not about the oil pan. And I'm gonna show you now why my engine failed. Just pulled my magnetic oil pan drain plug and there's a huge amount of metal on the magnetic plug itself. The oil smells very burnt. This oil hasn't been in there that long and it's, I don't even know, it's very black. Pan is off. 
can see there is a little bit of metal in the pickup. But I don't really see much under here, but I don't really know what I'm looking for. So let's just take a peek. As I mentioned sort of in Rob's video, as I started prepping the car the week or two weeks out from the track day, I was driving fine and then all of a sudden it would hesitate. So I would be on throttle, there'd be no power, and then all of a sudden it would catch up, catch up with itself. So it'd be like, uh, uh, and the, it would kind of get stuck and then go. And I had no idea what it was. I originally thought it was a timing issue or an electrical issue because my tachometer was going all over the place once it would catch up with, it, with itself. What I ultimately found out after I've taken the motor apart is my oil pump failed. And I'm pretty sure it is the original oil pump. And that's not a design flaw from Honda because this oil pump has 220,000 miles. I should have changed it when I did my timing belt and water pump, I think a little over a year ago, you know, I should have done that. This engine failed really because of me. And that bums me out so bad because at the age of the motor, it's not, you know, a design flaw from Honda. In this instance, the Y7, it failed because the oil pump went bad. So the oil pump, the bearing in itself was going bad. That's why it was hesitating as I was driving it around. And then what happened is it failed on track. So the oil pump is connected directly to the crank. So the oil pump failed. So the bearing seized up and it couldn't rotate. And if that can't rotate, then the crank can't rotate. Also, there's no oil being pumped through the motor. One of the bearings slipped a little bit and one of the pistons, I think that's number four, slipped a little bit and the motor seized. You can see the scoring marks on the bearing itself and then the others aren't as bad. And really when you think about it, the oil pump is on the opposite side of number four piston. Obviously that's going to be the part that's going to get the it's gonna be the hardest to get oil because it's furthest away from the pump. And that's why that one failed first. And obviously that fails, you know, the rest of the motor is not gonna turn anyway. Another problematic thing that I saw just with the design of the D-Series is you can see the bearing and you, if you take the bearings out like I did, as you see here, the oil actually bottlenecks. The bearing has a smaller hole than the actual uh, windage tray does. And you can see the mark around the hole in the bearing and uh, obviously that's problematic. So that's something I think can be improved upon um, in the future with better bearings. So I think um, aftermarket bearings would definitely be a better option in a D-Series for sure. So I am super bummed because uh, I haven't been able to test my brand new rebuilt short gear transmission with M Factory gears and M Factory LSD. Um, I was looking forward to that so much and, and that really didn't get a good feel of it. I got a, I got a couple laps in. It was a challenge. You know, when you're thinking about tracking your car and say, oh, I have a truck and I'll just tow it there, no problem. You have to remember, if your engine blows, if your engine goes and is done, you gotta get your car back onto the trailer. Even if you have a full-size trailer, you have to keep that in mind. So luckily the firm has a little bit of a sloped driveway in the pits and so Robbie and I were able to get that car back on the trailer and then it did take some work for me to get it off as you can see my wife helped me um, a little bit with that and then getting the trailer and then getting the car back in the garage I actually had to 
push it up with my wife's Ford Escape. No damage was done to any cars in this episode. This is the end of season three for me. There's lots of stuff going on in my life right now. I am not done with racing in any way, but this is definitely gonna be a point where I have to take a break. My wife is pregnant, so we are going to be having a baby girl in a few months. I'm looking forward to that so much. You know, I've been focusing on the car for a long time and I think it does need a little bit of a break. I need a break from it. Then I'm having surgery this week as well, so I'm gonna have recovery time for my back. So it's just gonna be a while. Rob and I are in the planning mode right now for us to figure out what we're gonna do for both of our cars. You know, there's always, there's a ton of options out there for Hondas, and I know you guys wanna see B and K series and stuff like that, and I'm just not sure. We would love to try a different motor. You know, it's not something that we are against, but the cost is so much more even to go B series. You all have to remember the motor itself, getting it in the car, getting it running, getting it race ready is a lot, a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of work. These cars are already set up for D series, so it is a lot easier and it's a lot cheaper. So we'll see, there is problems with getting D series because the motors themselves are old. There's just not a lot of good ones left. So we're working on some options now. If you all have a business, you all want to help us, please let us know. We are open to any idea. Feel free to drop us a comment or go to our Instagram or Facebook and send us a message. Robbie will be on the channel next. I appreciate y'all watching. Please go buy some stickers. Go buy some t-shirts, they are super cool. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, like our videos, that helps us so much. Share our videos with your friends. Take considerations when your the ads come up, you know, that's how we get revenue. So wink, wink, hint, hint, keep that in mind. And uh, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you probably in 2020.